for your cheapest and most reliable place to buy your FIFA 23 Ultimate Team coins, please do check out mmoexp.com. Link is down in the description below and also use the code WOLF at the checkout for 5% off your order. Yes then YouTube, we are back, but before we get started guys, if you want to drop a like on today's video for me, and hit that subscribe button to my channel, that would mean the world to me, it would honestly mean the world to me. Most of you guys that watch this video aren't subscribed to my channel, so do it, it is free, bottom right hand side, do it, hit that subscribe button. So, we're back with a brand new tactics video on a formation that I really didn't think I'd be doing a tactics video on this year, it was very good last year. And that is the 4-3-2-1. If any of you are using the 4-2-3, the 4 3 2, one sorry, let me know down in the comment section what you are using and the tactics you are running. 4-3-2-1 has been very good now, ever since last year, really. I remember doing a tactics video on the 4-3-2-1 towards the end of FIFA 22, and it was very, very, very strong. And as we've gone into FIFA 23, and obviously I'm in the elite division, I'm playing pros every single game. I'm seeing a lot of pros been using the 4-3-2-1. So the last couple of days, off stream, I've been tr trying out and testing out the 4-3-2-1. And it is very good. I, I can see why a lot of people are using the 4-3-2-1. I can really see why. It, it's kind of got the perfect blend of the narrow, but also the width as well. And you'll see what I do with the custom tactics in, in terms of the player instructions, which make it just an unbelievable formation, really. So this is how I set my team up. Mbappe up front, Neymar left forward, Cristiano Ronaldo right forward, Garincha as my right centre mid, and then of course, Yaya and Marquisio as the other central midfield players. Back four stays the same, nothing really too fancy, back four's back four. So, getting into the tactics, what do I play? It's always going to be balanced, yeah, let's be real. Pressed after possession loss and pressure on heavy touch are very good though, they are very, very, very good. But, like I always say to you guys in every single tactics video I drop, it just drains your stamina too much, and sometimes they can press when you're not expecting it, and then you're like, oh, shit, my back line is just all the way out of the pitch, and then, bang, you're going to get counter-attacked on. So, they are good, press, especially press after possession loss. It can be very, very, very effective, like, unbelievably effective. But I always play balanced, a balanced style where your team presses the ball to the middle of the pitch, and your team's shape is neutral. Basically, I just like it. You know what I mean? I, I, I just like it. It's what I use. It's what I use. The width... Is then 45. Any of you that have been watching my videos on FIFA 23 or my tactics videos, you will know that I, I actually... Normally, I would always just play 50. But this year, because of how the defending is, I really want my team to be more compact. So anywhere from 40 to 45, you're on to a winner. So I'm using 45. Just works. The more compact you are, the easier it is to play a switch to cover for the chip through balls over the top. This year, the through balls over the top are so, so, so broken. So make sure you do watch out for them. Depth 72. Remember what I said to you, by the way, these do work on both new gen and old gen, but there is a little tweak that you're going to want to need on old gen. So on new gen, 72 depth will make your team do the automatic offside trap. But if you're on old gen, this doesn't work. So on old gen, I recommend anywhere from 50 to 55 depth. I would probably play 55 on old gen. That is what I would use. But for me, on current new gen, no, on new gen, sorry. 72 makes the team do the automatic offside trap, which is very, very, very overpowered. So make sure you do give that a go. Build up play, of course, it's going to be balanced. Let's be real. Am I ever going to use anything? But again, like I always say in every single video, long ball is definitely a viable option. Like it really, 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 really is a viable option. Okay, long ball is good. I just prefer balance. I think balance is just that ever so slightly better. But like I say to you, if you're struggling with creating opportunities, definitely give long ball a go and see what you think. It might help. It might all of a sudden just transform your game. You know, our players will be making a lot more runs and stuff like that. So I would definitely recommend that. But for me, I like balance. Of course, it's going to be direct passing. I should just get it printed on my t-shirt. This is a retro Villa t-shirt that I'm wearing, but I should I should get a t-shirt printed with direct passing on it. I absolutely love the direct passing. Why is my phone? Sorry, my phone keeps going off. Direct passing is the way to be. It's just so overpowered on both new gen and old gen. Use and abuse it. The width, 45. The reason being, I like my... Because it is used... Although they're not left forward and right forward now. They're classed as centre forwards. But I just like to have my forwards a little bit narrower in a 4-3-2-1. And you'll see why in the player instructions in a minute. Why it's better for it to be narrow. So 45 on the width. Again, if you're new here, you probably won't. But if you're old, if you... You know, you've been around the block, not been around the block, but you've been around the block on my videos. Seven players in the box. No real method to the madness. It is literally just, I always think, the more players you have in the box, the more likely you are to score a goal, right? That's literally just the way I think about it. The more players in the box, more likely you are to score a goal. So seven players in the box. 
I then do play one corners and two free kicks. I know that sounds weird, but with the one corner, it gives me more options on the edge of the box. I never cross the ball from a corner. But if you are someone that does actually whip the ball in from a corner, then of course do play two and two. But for me, I don't, so I play one. Now, player instructions, this is where it does get very interesting. And this is where the 4-3-2-1 really does come into its own. So, sorry, that's enemy. here. My middle striker, literally... Just on getting behind, that's it. I don't have him on stay central, don't have him on come back, stay forward or anything like that. My middle striker is just on getting behind. I want my middle striker, so my Mbappe, to be making runs in behind constantly because as he's making them runs, it creates more space in the midfield, which we'll see in a minute with the player instructions on the midfield, why that then does help. Right, so my middle striker, getting behind. My right foot, well, my, my right sided forward that's now a centre forward, not a right forward on FIFA 23, although it makes no difference is also on getting behind. That's it. So, my middle striker, getting behind, and my right sent my right forward, uh, I'm just going to call in the right forward. My right forward is then on getting behind. Okay, that's the only thing I touch on them two. My left forward is on completely default settings, but I put my, na my left forward on comeback on defence. And the reason being is then Neymar will drop in and it will defend in a 4-4-2. So, I'll have Mbappe and Ronaldo as two strikers up top when I'm defending. But my Neymar will drop down into like a left midfield position. So, so you have your two, your centre foot, your striker and your right forward on getting behind, and your left forward on come back on defence. Your left centre mid, you just completely default, but you do put him on cover centre. Okay, the middle centre mid, you want him to play more as like a CDM. So I have him on stay back while attacking and cover centre. And then the right centre mid, very important. I have him on get into the box for cross to help with the attacking side of the game. And also, I have him on cover wing. So it literally defends like a 4-4-2, but then attacks with a lot of attackers. Because you'll see in a minute what I also do with my fullback. So you want the right centre mid on cover wing and get into the box for cross. Very important that you put him on cover wing. It will help. So for me... I then have my right back on stay back while attacking, okay? Remember, normally I would have both. But I then have my left back on join the attack and overlap. So basically what I do is I have one of my full backs on join the attack and overlap and the other one stay back. It doesn't matter, YouTube, if you want your right back on join the attack and your left back on stay back. I just have that. I just have it that way because Dallow is going to be crap going forward and Mendy is going to be better going forward, right? So I have my Mendy joining the attack and my Dallow staying back, basically. And then in goal, of course, it's Donnarumma, comes to crosses and sweeper keeper. And that right there is the best formation. I'd probably say top two formation right now. This and the four triple two are insane at the minute. Like, they are really, really, really good. If you did enjoy this video, please, please, please make sure to drop a like on it. Hit that subscribe button to my channel, please. It would mean the world to me. Most of you watching this won't be subbed. Just hit that sub button. It's free. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember, guys, spread the love of positivity. PMA, positive mental attitude. Peace out. One love.